serious conversations about how to better address the homeless and be more compassionate began. So uh, that's where the staff report begins. It talks uh, uh, briefly about the role of the downtown community board and the chat team. Uh, uh, the, the, the chat team and the safety team are working together to provide uh, better communication and, and a more compassionate sweep. And, and I was teasing uh, our street supervisor, Joao Bertoni, uh, last week at our, at our all hands meeting in public parks. I said, You better watch out, Joe. Your, your crew is getting a reputation for being really compassionate. And that's not typical of the street crew, right? So we've always been compassionate. So, I mean, I, I think the newspaper did well to cover how they uh, really uh, went about the most difficult of jobs uh, in, in the best way possible. And, of course, that doesn't come without the forewarning that comes from Commander Crable and his crew, uh, Jeff Lerner from the CSUMB uh, Service Learning Center, and others uh, from our chat team that are down there on the street every day working to communicate with the population that is there. But homeless is much larger than Chinatown, and it was after the, the sweep in, in uh, January of 2013 and the mayor directed us uh, as staff to work directly and, and the city department heads began to meet and uh, we took a tour of Sherwood Park and uh, we had identified a potential uh, site for a structured campsite but uh, several members of, of, the, of the camping uh, community uh, explained to us that this was too dangerous, uh, they didn't like uh, the location, etc. And at that point and working with our city attorney and others, the city changed gears. And we started looking towards acquiring 10 Soledad Street and a more permanent solution. So we moved from, from a structured campsite concept on towards a more of a service uh, production. How can we provide toilets? How can we provide services on a more humane level? And that's um, working together with our coalition of homeless service providers and others. Um, uh, we did uh, begin to develop a plan that has just taken a long time to come together. So, um, you know, with the uh, elimination of the iHealth program, Shelter Outreach Plus uh, provided, and the restructuring of that created a new need. Uh, I believe uh, our past city attorney, um, Vanessa Bayarta, had requested from the, uh, the Coalition of Home Service Providers a list of shelters in our city, and the number was astonishingly low. And so uh, the need to create this warming shelter uh, and, and work hard towards establishing it began. Um, I had drafted a, a, a service proposal in July, but without funding or a service provider, it was just really hard to get things rolling. Uh, with the support of the county and, and with the support of Shelter Outreach Bus coming back, um, and the director of Reyes Bonilla in particular working offline, we began to develop a concept it will hope to open tomorrow, uh, and, and a great uh, appreciation and gratitude, as the mayor stated in our press release for Sun Street Centers, stepping up to the plate, so we'll open the warming shelter tomorrow at 37 Central. That is not the end at all. Um, the warming shelter will house, we learned from fire departments in the last two days, so between 33 and 34 people. I think the need is much greater than that. Uh, also, the shelter will not be available every day of the week, and we're still struggling to find locations to fill in for those days when it's not available. So there's still a lot of work to be done, and I don't want to uh, uh, turn on that light, but there's still a lot of work to be done. So uh, working towards 10 Solomon Street, that would be a relocation for the CSUMB Learning Center. We relieve them of the rent that they pay currently. Um, they are short on funds come June 30th, so maybe we can get that property acquired and rehabilitated and help them move in there and, and continue their services. There is capacity there to uh, build in showers and other facilities for the homeless. Um, and so that facility then could become easily rehabbed from its current status. It's quite a, an eyesore, it was featured in one of my slides before, um, and it needs help, and it would really help the community to fix that up. So uh, on page three of staff's report, I uh, state uh, three or four things that the city would do in the future. And that would be to open a winter warming shelter to acquire and rehabilitate 10 Soledad Street and to support the 2010 Chinatown Rebound Vision and to build that social services center on Bridge Street. Um, and then contribute to the, uh, the chat and support the local service providers with federal funds as it is. <coughs> so at this time, I'll just uh, allow the city council to ask questions and then move as quickly as we can. So thank you. Questions to my right? No questions, but a comment. Okay, we'll get there shortly. Councilman Guerrero. Comments or questions? No questions. Okay. 
We will now go to the public for uh, comment.
Okay, we'll now go back to council members for comments. I'd like to make, I'd like to make a comment that we set the four items that Mr. Reynolds presented. And to thank you again, Mr. Reynolds, and um, to everyone here again, and let's move forward to support the university and all these other items, the warming shelter, um, the, re the rebound mission, and continue to support CHAT and the other service providers. Comment, Council Member Brewer. Just very briefly, I just want to say, um, you know, with all of the meetings that went on and over the over the last essentially year, um, I have to congratulate you on um, finding a partner in the program. I know that we have talked repeatedly and begged and pleaded um, for the county to come to the table, and um, I keep repeating over and over again that we do not have social services for the city of Salinas. Um, our, our social services department is Don Reynolds, period. That's it. I got one guy. And, um, and so, recognizing that, I just want to commend you um, for a job well done. Thank you. My left. Don, um, I really appreciate all your work that's been done, and I think that this report is, is so interesting that you went through over a year's worth of work, and it wasn't until this fall that the county started becoming involved, and, and just their, their lack of involvement, the silence from the county has just been deafening. Um, so it's, it's interesting that they're finally here, and I know Gloria Wallet has been magnificent, so um, not throwing stones at individuals, but it's real frustrated that there hasn't been a lot of involvement. Pardon me? I know, I know. Um, just delighted that the county has agreed, though, to the um, moving forward with the acquisition of um, 10 California Street, or 10 Soledad. Um, and it'll be interesting when, I guess we still have to hear from the Franchise Board and the IRS, but for the leads, but boy, that'll be a great day when that's done. Um, I think one of the things that was complicated this year is um, not having the armory. And, and I, you know, with all due respect to, I know how you feel, Kimberly, but I will say this, that armories, National Guard armories throughout the United States have been a very convenient place for people to go. They can house 400 people easily. Um, wow. And so we have shelters. The, the four people who died in Santa Clara County, the four people who died in Santa Clara County, the next day, two of the armories opened, Sunnyvale and uh, Gilroy. So I just wanted to say that it's it's frustrating that we don't have access to this armory. I bring this up because I don't want Don to have to go begging again next year and to find places and to get criticism from the Californian and to get criticism from everybody out there saying, why aren't you opening? When other cities and other counties throughout the nation have that nice, easy place to open up, and we don't have that. And, and it frustrates me, and, and I really want to support Don that we somehow get something started now so that next year we will not be in crisis when it comes to a warming shelter. Councilmember Castaneda. Thank you, Mayor. You know, it, it took me seven nights to spend out there. I wanted to go go home within the first ten minutes. So Eugene and Van, who I met at last week at one of our meetings here at 12 o'clock, you can hear the frustration in their voice because this has been a long-discussed issue. And, of course, people like to see things to come to fruition overnight. I think one of the biggest things that we can do to, to break the homeless community and their hopes is a trust with the city. They're, they're, they don't understand as far as the bureaucracy that we face, whether it's the county, the state, the city, and so forth. They just want to be respected and treated as dignified human beings. When they see people like ourselves, we're the closest of what a local or public entity can be to them. Because the next level's up. Uh, the higher you go up, county, state, federal, it's much difficult to get an appointment. 
So I think, Don, thank you with the partnerships. One thing that I would not like to see, and it would require even us to call an emergency or special meeting, is, is not to open up the shelter and then close it up immediately because of the lack of partnerships, uh, of its funds, or whatever obstacle may present itself. I think my, my colleague, Councilwoman Joe Lutz, is, is absolutely right. We need to look at what other avenues can we present, and it starts within the first tier of resources. What are the buildings and, and land that we have? Sean, that came up to, to speak as public comments, that's an excellent program that we should tackle. Community service for community housing. Clean up our city and you get community housing in return. Restaurant and so forth. We have to look at the long range plan. I think the long range plan, we're in the discussion of more goals. Uh, we're going to retreat that the city manager has experience and pretty much all over the, this type of battle matters as well. So if we can look at our, our short term, mid term, and long term planning, and we have an excellent person such as Don, Don probably makes up the whole department of DSS. We need to go ahead and give them some more support. You know, it's unfair for one person to really tackle this issue, which is a major mammoth issue in itself, and still expect him to perform the rest of his other job duties, which he has done as well. So any support we can swing to him would be greatly appreciated, not only from myself, but the, the residents. I think easily I see potential for two more shelters over enough with them next week. We, we need to partner up more with the churches. If we can go ahead and, and get the permit center to really be more lenient in working with the churches and working with some vacant lands out there, business owners as well, there's a potential to open up two more shelters within the next week. So I want to go ahead and share that with the city manager, share that with some of my council colleagues as well. And uh, thank you, Mayor, for bringing this up again to the, to the forefront. Everyone else is shying away from the topic. For the city of our size, 153,000, we should have no more than, no less than 10 shelters. Other, other cities, 25,000 and 30,000 population, have four to five shelters. We need to go visit those as soon as possible and get more modeling and ideas. And if we need to get Don Reynolds to the Portland Village or the one down south as well, let's send them as soon as possible. Yes. Thank you, Don. Well, to our colleagues in Santa Clara County, I'd say that wealthy cities that write a check to solve their social problems are far poorer because of it. 